I'm Tyler Suters and you're watching Clean Skies News. In the wake of the Gulf spill, speculation is swirling about asset sales regarding BP. The company is facing massive expenditures as a result of the cleanup and the damage done by the spill. So there may be many sales getting underway regarding what BP has to offer and who wants what. Joining us now to talk about the ripe buyer's market is Fadel Geit. He is Managing Director of Oil and Gas Research with Oppenheimer and he joins us now from New York City. Fadel, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Uh, let's start first of all with what BP has to offer. What assets do you think will attract the most attention on the open market? Uh, it really depends. BP has assets that uh, probably worth between 300 and 350 billion dollars. Uh, BP indicated publicly that they are interested in selling assets in the next six to 12 months of about 10 billion dollars. That is a fraction of uh, their total assets. Uh, so BP has plenty of assets everywhere around the world that could be potential candidates. Really depend on uh, the market, uh, the level of interest, uh, as well BP's need for cash. BP right now does not need cash, but BP is preparing itself for a big day that they need the cash, whether five billion or ten billion dollar that will have to be paid within a specific time, and BP has to be ready for that. What are the complexities involved, Fadl, when you are selling uh, leases and land and mineral rights versus actual infrastructure, such as storage or pipeline assets? Uh, leases and uh, mineral land, they are all subjective because they are not uh, tested. Uh, the, the, the range could be very wide. Uh, but assets that are producing, that are known, that they have track record, uh, you know, basically are not going to get, uh, you know, a wide range of uh, bids, if you will. Uh, but brand new areas uh, could range between, you know, five and ten uh, billion. Uh, while a, um, an asset that has been producing, like for example, if we look at the uh, Alaska operation of BP, they had been producing there for 30 years, so there would be no surprises. I mean, almost everybody knows uh, what the profit uh, uh, margin is, what the cost structure is, what the decline rate is, uh, the politics, the geology, the, the, the weather, there are no surprises. But when you get an area that is really very new, that has not been fully developed, you know, take for example, some of the deep water uh, Gulf of uh, Mexico leases, okay, they have high upside potential, but we know now what the downside risk could be. So that could balance uh, or curb some enthusiasm. Uh, you know, 60 days ago, the same assets could have been worth a lot more. Maybe now it's worth uh, a lot less. Is it unusual for a major entity like BP to switch from buyer to seller so quickly for the hunter to become the hunted in some senses? Unfortunately, this Macan duel has changed not only BP, but in my view, of likely to change uh, politics, policies, and the industry in general. Uh, what about a big company like this being forced to sell when it's so used to making acquisitions? Uh, before the spill, you could point to, what, half a dozen rumors within the business community of BP buying various assets, and now all of a sudden it needs this cash or it will need this cash at some point. A very interesting observation, but a lot of people don't realize oil companies never sit in their hand. They are in the business of buying and selling assets almost every single year. There is no company that I know, and I've been in the business 25 years, that has not sold and bought assets every year. So uh, Exxon, BP, Shell, Chevron, uh, Conoco, they're always buyers and sellers of assets and will continue to be. They're upgrading their, pro their portfolio. Uh, they are delta hand that they want to improve their uh, winning chances, if you will. Uh, you mentioned ExxonMobil, Fadl, uh, regardless of the chances of whether or not this company will attempt to or in fact buy BP. What would it say about the industry or how would it change the industry if big oil lost one member and BP were in fact absorbed entirely by another major? Well, interesting. hypothetically that could be the case. Uh, realistically speaking, I put very low probability that BP would be acquired 
uh, by any other company. Uh, I do believe that merger, mega mergers are over. Uh, uh, the, the current political reality makes it very difficult for any government, US or European government, that will give the green light for a company to, to absorb another company and end up laying 40, 50,000 people. I mean, unemployment line, we don't want them any longer. We want them shorter. So I don't think it will fly. I think it's going to be very difficult. And I would say it's almost impossible. But having said that, um, it, it, it's a pity because we need more competition. We need more companies. We need more uh, different approaches and different options. So uh, fewer companies, uh, in my view, would not be a welcoming thing. Fadl Guide is joining us from Oppenheimer headquarters in New York City. Fadl, once again, thank you for your time and sharing your insight with us today. Thank you very much. I'm Tyler Suters, and thank you for being with us as well. You're watching Clean Skies News.